On stage is brought to you in part by Connect JA presents Legends in Concert. That's right, it's Legends in Concert. Sunday, September 18th at Legion Field in Covington, Georgia. Get your tickets now on eventbrite.com. Brings uh, black and yellow Bad man clean every day. to our stage and gives career update. But how does the dancehall king feel about the return of Sting? Meet clinical psychologist Dr. KJ, who prescribes music for healing. How's that? Also meet the Trinidadian artist known as Young Breda who appears to have quite a buzz in the Jamaican space. Wow. All coming up. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be back. On stage with Winford Williams. On stage is brought to you in part by Connect JA presents Legends in Concert. That's right, it's Legends in Concert. Sunday, September 18th at Legion Field in Covington, Georgia. Get your tickets now on eventbrite.com. So meet humanitarian and clinical psychologist, Dr. KJ, who prescribes music for healing. This as the US-based Jamaican practices psychiatry as a profession, but believes his gospel music ministry is a calling. Among KJ's extensive list of achievements is a US President Award for humanitarian work. He's right now right here on our stage with a lot of big things to announce. Welcome, sir. Blessings on you, Winfred. Good to have you. Yes, sir. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. God is good. Yes. Yeah, God so, is good. So let's start there. At what age did you migrate to the U.S.? Uh, well, 2014, under uh, bad circumstances. Um, in fact, before I migrated, I was a, a guidance counselor mm -hmm. here in Jamaica. I was a pastor, um, pastoring a church in Nockpatrick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was also working, doing some work with the JCF as uh, a, an associate chaplain. Uh, it so happened, uh, my two kids were born in America. And for some strange reason, my wife just decided, you know what, I want to take a, a trip with the kids to the States. Uh, they were in school, mm -hmm. uh, my son was two, uh, my daughter was four. Uh, they were in school. And I was like, why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, it was in June. And I was like, just wait until, you know, I'm on break. Um, she said, no, I just feel like I need to go. Uh, two days after she got into the States, uh, just finished preaching in church. The topic I, I was preaching on, Winford, was whatever happened, don't complain. But I didn't realize that everything I was talking about was me. I was preaching to me, and I didn't know. The phone rang immediately after I finished preaching. I responded to the call. It was a 404 error code number. So I thought it was my wife. Mm. So I said, hi, babes. Uh, I heard, uh, no, sir, this is not babes. This is doctor. And he gave his name. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And I said, how may I help you? He said, sir, you need to come now. I said, what's going on? Uh, he said, it's not looking good, um, but wherever you are, you got to come now. Immediately, I broke down. I started crying because he did say some more stuff about not sure she's going to make it. Um, it's bad. Come and see her. But I could not even afford a plane fare at the time. I called several people to help. Uh, eventually, a good friend of mine, um, you know, he, he came to my rescue and I left the next day. When I got to the hospital, I could not recognize my wife, Mark, you. She just left two days, well, it would have been three days ago. Oh, All right? I could not recognize her. And she was bound to a bed. Um, 
I, I asked her if she remembers me. She says no. Um, I was like shocked. I, I don't know what was going on. Uh, well, it went on, and doctors couldn't find out what was going on with her at the time. But I knew I had to make a decision. So what I did, I left the United States, and I came back, and I resigned from all my jobs. I went back um, to uh, take care of my family. So a good friend of mine, uh, she decided she would take the kids uh, while I stay mm -hmm. in the hospital with my wife. Um, it was the roughest time in my life. I can imagine, man. The roughest time in my life. Uh, just imagine sitting there every day, every night, seeing everything going on. They're taking blood uh, every two hours, every four hours. Um, medications, up on medications. Um, she's not remembering who you are. Um, her features change. Mm -hmm. She doesn't look nothing like what you know her to be. She's been on every machine mm -hmm. in the hospital and they couldn't find what was happening. So it got to the point, Winfred, where I had to isolate myself from everybody because by now, there were a lot of negative things that were now coming. You know, um, you must have done something, she must have done something. And think about it, I'm in the church. And so these things begin to play on my mind. Well, one day I was in the, 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 the room with her. Uh, there were six machines hooked up to her and every machine went flat. Everyone, she died. She was dead, she stopped breathing, everything. And I just heard footsteps coming down the hall, and I heard code blue, code blue. At that time, I didn't know what code blue mm -hmm. was. Code blue, code blue, code blue. Six nurses came, three doctors came. They did everything they could do. The kids flashed in my mind right away, and I was like, how am I going to manage without her? Because she's our backbone. She does everything for us. How am I going to manage? Uh, and, and I just turned my back to the doctors and the nurse and I looked in the ceiling and I cried out to God with a loud voice. I cried out, but I cried out in patois, right? So the doctors didn't understand what I was saying. So when I cried out to God and I, I said to him, God, you know so bad, you can't do this, right? Bring her back and bring her back now. And when I said that in my desperation, the machines, the bottom one came up, they gave a sound. The, the second one gave a sound until all six gave a sound. And I heard one of the doctors say, oh my God, she's back, she's back, she's back. And they got to work and they worked on her. Now my wife told me that at that moment, she was ascending, her soul, her spirit was ascending. She said she could look down. She was looking down on her body. She said she couldn't see those around the body. She couldn't see me, she couldn't see the doctor, but she could see her body and while she was going up and I shouted, it's like she got frightened and her spirit dropped back, fell back in her body. And she, she did like this. And that's when all the machines um, came back up and the, the doctors say uh, they really worked on her. Uh, by now, three months had passed. So we're talking about a three month period had passed. And the doctor says that, uh, all right, you know, she had Cushing's, the Cushing disease. Yeah, it has to do with the hormone. They said, okay, we're gonna do surgery. All right. The doctor says, uh, the surgery will take about three hours. Three hours, I was walking the tater door, back and forth, tater door. Three hours, nothing. Nobody came out to me. Four hours, nobody came out to me. Five hours, nobody came out to me. Now by now, Winfred, you know, I'm almost dying now mm -hmm. because in my mind, she's dead. She's dead not knowing that while I am thinking that she's dead, she was actually dead. She was actually dead. Six hours, nobody. Seven hours, doctors came, sat me down. As soon as I saw the doctor, I started to cry. I couldn't do nothing more but cry. Mm -hmm. So I started to cry and the doctor sat and he was, he was just rubbing my leg. And strange enough, the doctor just looked at me and he cried as well cried with me and he said to me, uh, how many children you have? And I told him, and he said, how old are they? And I told him, and he just said, ah. And he got up and he went back in the theater. And when he went back, they did three more hours. So she was in theater for 10 hours. Now listen to the miracle. The next day, 
I was standing in the corridor and a nurse who was in the theater saw me and she called me. And she said, what did the doctor say to you yesterday when he came to you? I told her. And she said, that, that, that was not what he came to tell you. I said, what? And she said, no. She said, we actually lost your wife in the theater. And the doctor came out to tell you that there's nothing more we can do for her. And so we were going to call it quit. But when he came and he saw the emotions in your eyes and knowing that you've always, you're always here for your wife, he came back and he said, you know what, doctors, nurse, let's do this. Let's try something. And they managed to get her back. They got her back and they worked on her. Um, so when we talk about a miracle, I, I tell people all the time, Winfred, I don't ask God for a miracle no more because every day I see a miracle when I look at my wife. And music. And music. Where was music in, during this time? Well, I, I actually found out that I could sing when I was 10. 10 years old, I went to a rally because I grew up in the church all my life. Um, went to a rally, and my pastor at the time, uh, Reverend Houghton, was the chairman. And I asked him, you know, if I could sing for my church. Uh, eventually, uh, they said, you know, I could do it. I didn't know. I just felt like I wanted to sing. Don't know if I could sing. Mm -hmm. But I went up there, Winfred. It was a packed rally. And when I went up there, man, and I started singing, listen, it's the most ice cream I ate that night. Now, you know what rallies, everybody would take the money and put it in the oven plate. Nobody did that. Mm -hmm. Everybody pushed it in my pocket. My pocket was all full. Every pocket was full, full of money that night. <laughs> um, at 10 years old, man, I feel good. Oh, that's where my musical journey started. And then in high school, when I went to high school, I was a part of a, a, a acapella group. Um, we entered festivals. Yeah. Um, and then I, I became a cabaret singer. Um, used to sing for Sanders and, and other hotels here uh, before I went to college. In 2012, I entered the JCDC gospel mm -hmm. competition. I was a finalist. But then I put music down until I migrated and prodigal son came to visit me. And he was at the house and uh, apparently he heard me singing sometime and he said to my wife, he can sing, I want to help him. And my wife said to him, no, if you tell him that that's what you're going to do. He's going to tell you he's too busy. Yeah. He's not going to do it. So you got to find a way. So you had no interest in I didn't have any interest after 2012. However, uh, he was sitting in the kitchen one day yeah. and I came downstairs and I was singing um, this worship song. We have come into his house, gather in his name to worship him. And I was just worshiping, but he was behind me crying and I didn't know. So I turned around and I saw him crying. And I stopped, and he said, no, continue, you're ministering to me. I said, really? And then he said, youth, you can't sing, you know. You can't sing. And he left it there. In the evening, he said to me, are you know any studio around here? I said, in Atlanta. I said, yeah, I have a virgin um, as a studio. I said, you want to do some recording down there? He said, yeah. I said, all right, let me call him. So I called my virgin. My virgin said, yeah, man, come 8 o'clock in the night and I drove him an hour and a half and I drove him to the studio. So I introduced them and I sat down because my virgin was excited to meet Prodigal and all of that. So sat down there, but he was there now, you know, listening to rhythms and everything. And, you know, and he, he would have like, um, KJ. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, he's like, KJ, you, 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 like, you like that rhythm? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sound good, man. That sound nice, man, that rhythm there. And then, and then he started to put words and words, and then what he didn't know, he scratched the first verse and the, 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 the hook. And when I did it, man, the thing got so interested, man, sweet, man, and nice, I am not leaving. That was the title of the song. And <laughs> when it was complete, completed about 4 a.m., he said to me, um, it's your song. And I said, what? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, man, it's your song. Mm -hmm. I said, really? He said, yeah. And then he, he shared a story what my wife told him. I said, oh, so that's how you tricked me into getting into this thing. You know, but then I loved it. I loved it, and there's no stopping now. So you became a recording artist 
right there and there. Yeah, I, I, I have an album now, um, Floodgates. Yes. Uh, it's streaming on all um, platforms. And so we have a number of songs on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look, look up Dr. KJ Official, all the songs are there. So let's take a little piece of your music, huh? Joy coming out the morning. Joy coming out the morning. The music of KJ featuring the prodigal son. Wow. So is it psychiatry or music now for you? What, what, what is both. taking up most of your time? Uh, both? It's both. Um, and I tell you what, they work hand in hand because both uh, music is therapeutic. Yes. All right? Uh, if you're sad, music. If people want to make love and they listen to certain music, mm -hmm. even if they were Lazarus, as you know, not mm -hmm. now going for them, music enhances. There's just something that music does to the psyche that you want more. Mm. All right, even the legends today, that's why it, in music, that's why they're so successful because they are doing so much more for the masses mm -hmm. than even a regular, just a psychologist. So your, your prescription for your, your patients, can I call them that? Oh yeah, yeah they're patients. How do you recommend that they consume music? Well, first of all, we, we try to find out what they like mm. because we don't deal with problems. Um, that's a mistake a lot of people make. We listen to your problems, but we help you through the solution. Okay. Music is a solution to whatever problem. That's just, music is just what works for everything. So <laughs> you're organizing an event? Yes. Uh, it's called Embrace a Promise. It's mm -hmm. chapters four and five because we would have done other chapters in the United States. And so um, when we started, uh, you know, everybody was saying, Doc, you're brave, because I started while the pandemic was okay. going on, mm -hmm. because I realized that um, the way we socialize has changed drastically. And everybody was now online, Zoom, you name it. And, you know, I, I got a team together. And I said, hey, listen, uh, we need to take back this world. And it was out of that um, that, you know, I founded the movement Embrace the Promise. Uh, we went into Florida in the height of the pandemic and the place was full. We went to Philadelphia, the place was full. Mm -hmm. Then we went into New York, it was full. So we repeated the cycle. They were all sold out. And I said, you know what, let's go to Jamaica. Let's take this. So this is Jamaica. the first in Jamaica? This is the first in Jamaica. Oh. So yeah. it's a fool. Yeah. <laughs> is that going to be a fool? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, no, let me tell you, uh, Winfrey. Yes. We have been using the, the, the social media. Yes. And when I put it out and the others put it out on social media, let me tell you, man, it warms my heart. The, the love that the Jamaican people is showing for the event, the support that they're already giving towards the event, it is just remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I realize that people are hungry for these things. If you look at the magnitude of the show that we're bringing to Jamaica, it's the biggest. We have not gone that big in the United States. But we have, I yes. have decided I'm coming home. Now, Westmoreland is home for me, mm -hmm. literally. And so one will be in Westmoreland at yes. Manning's. I had to go to Manning's. I had to go home, all right? We're going to be having the return of prodigal son. He has not ministered in Jamaica for yeah, over I five know. years. Uh, yes, I know. We're going to have the return of Jason Mighty, mm -hmm. who has not been here for over four years. We have Jonathan Nelson. Then we have the stalwart, uh, Ron Kenoli. Mm -hmm. I was shocked when I did my poll and I realized everybody wants to see Ron Kenoli. They are hungry for this man. We have Joan Flemings. And I tell everybody, you know, Winfred, I know you're going to be there in Kingston, mm -hmm. but I wear no boot, you know, because you're going to, you're going to dance off the healing. <laughs> right. Okay, right. sir. We, we have a lot. We have just, it's just a big show. Uh, October 29th, yeah. we're going to be in West Berlin. And October 30, we're going to be in Ronnie William Entertainment Center. All Fontana pharmacies, island wide. Mm -hmm. um, you can pick your tickets up. And in West Milan, of course, you know, West Milan a yard again. So one outlet can do a West Milan. Um, so we have Royal Pharmacy in West Berlin, and we have South Sea Pharmacy in White House, yes. along with Fontana. Those are the only three outlets. We're also online. You can get Early Bird online. 
Okay, and so, spur open. so lots of healing will be going on. Oh, yeah. We're expecting an outpouring of the blessing and the power of God in this event. People will be healed. I'm expecting lives to be transformed. All of that. And at the same time, we're also giving back to our community. I'm a, I'm, I'm a giver. And, and God has blessed me to give because when I had nothing at all, my daughter at five years old prophesied in my life. I came home from the hospital when my wife was there um, to, to see them. And she saw me coming out of the bus and she ran to meet me and she held my leg, Winfred, and she looked up in my face and she said, Daddy, I'm hungry. And when she said, Daddy, I'm hungry, I couldn't find 25 cents to buy a bottle of water. And I started to cry. And I cried and she started saying, no, no, Daddy, I'm not hungry no more. Daddy, I'm not hungry no more. And I looked at her and I cried. And when I was crying, she looked up at me and she said, Daddy, you know, one of these days, God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us and we're going to feed a lot of people. And I kid you not, Winfred, every week, we feed over 4,000 people. Mm. Every week. Oh, where? Here and Here overseas. in the United States, all over. Um, I, I also have a company. And as a result of my company, we're able to take care of a lot of families. We also send kids to school. Uh, we pay their tuition from primary school, uh, uh, high school rather, up to um, the tertiary level. And, and this is what the show is all about. Um, we are going to be doing scholarships, um, especially for education. That's where my focus is. Wow. I'm looking forward um, to seeing you. Yeah. I'd embrace the promise in Kingston. Well, I you shall, know, I shall be there. Your good friend Jermaine Edwards is there too. You I know, intend so. to be there. All right, sir. <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to have a great time. Yes, yeah. sir. And, and it's on the 29th? The, of, the 30th. Uh, Kingston is the 30th. Kingston is the 30th. And yes. Westmoreland is the 29th. The 29th. So Mannings, okay. Westmoreland, and Ronnie William Entertainment Center, Kingston. Thank you so pleasure. much for coming and sharing your story with us, sir. My pleasure. For the full Dr. KJ interview, please go to On Stage TV YouTube. <laughs> All right, so that's him in this segment of our show, the man himself, Dr. KJ. And still to come, the king of the dance hall. But before that, young brother will be here from Trinidad. Don't want to miss that. We'll be back. On Stage with Winford Williams. On Stage is brought to you in part by... Connect JA presents Legends in Concert. That's right, it's Legends in Concert. Sunday, September 18th at Legion Field in Covington, Georgia. Get your tickets now on eventbreak.com. Now, here is where we meet the Trinidadian recording artist known as Young Breda, who appears to have quite a buzz in the Jamaican street at the moment. Right now, right here on our stage, young brother. <laughs> brother. What are you doing? <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, man. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Well, so what the buzz for us? Because it appears you, you have the Jamaican street locked. Is it? Yes, so. Yes. Would you say that? Yes, I do. And that's not easy for a Trini to, to achieve, is it? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> well, we love Trini, you know. A lot of man big down here, but... Explain the music for, for me. Well, my music is dancehall. I do dancehall. It's a, a different type of dancehall. I do party dancehall where people, when you hear my music, yes. it's for the ladies them to enjoy themselves. Yes. You understand? Even the fellas in the party and all, when my music come on, they know this is the time to whine on a lady or dance on a girl. Yes. Rock out time. But you're soca. Your bass is in soca? Yes, it is. Yes. Your dancehall credentials are rising, like it's competing with the soca, or, or what? Or no, um, I wouldn't say it's competing with soca because I, I really soca music every time for carnival and so forth, every year for carnival. Yes. But I would say my profession is dancehall, 
but my soca is my culture. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I will never leave on my culture, you know? Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a mainstream artist, I'm multi talented, I have Afro music. I, yes. I just put my talent, what God gave me out there. That's the way to do it, my friend. And we're in a melting, a melting pot of genres in the Caribbean. Um, you're using the console and you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're voicing at the same time. Maybe you're even bigger because you, you're, even, you're offering more actually because you're an artist. Yes, I am. But you're also a selector. Correct. Okay. Speak to us about your musical journey. When did it start and some of the hurdles you had to, to overcome? Well, I started music at the age of seven. Mm-hmm. From young, doing like in primary school I would do Calypso competition, I play instruments, drums. Um, before I started singing, I was in a music band playing trumpet. Mm-hmm. Then I moved to trombone. Um, after the secondary school, I joined the choir, and that's where I started singing. Oh. Okay. And after there, now, you know, started writing more music and professionally started going to the studio and Optimus Production, bring out music and, you know, Mm-hmm. With the blessings and the most high, everything just started. You know, I started to learn how to, you know, do different things, different ways in the music, and yeah, right. find myself who I really am. All right, just pause a minute and let's just take a piece yeah. of your music right now. Say, baby girl, you know me, shout. Say, come here when we fall in love. Nice vibe from the music of Young Brother. Young Brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? That one is. Falling. Falling is the name of that one, my jinx. <laughs> this, this is where now, this record. It's out right now on YouTube. Yes. You know it's it's Falling. It's my latest brand new music video. Yes. Um, this is just a different side of me, you know. I mean, I have the crazy side where I tell the, tell the girls them to do a lot of crazy things. Mm-hmm. But this side is actually... Uh, side of me that I really want to put out to my female supporters out there because okay. I see. believe in goodness. Okay. <laughs> so you, you believe in romance and respecting, yeah. respecting them? Yeah. And all of that. And getting married and children and all. Yes, having a family. So you're growing up, sir? Yes. So rising, so falling is actually rising, the song? Yes. <laughs> it's rising. Yeah. Falling is rising. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, so go back to family now. You, you just, we just touched it to talk about oh. your own family back home. Well, my family home, simple family, small family. Um, yeah. Grew up single parent, you know, mom alone. My father was uh, a vagrant on the street. Yeah. He died being a vagrant on the street oh. in front of my primary school. I had to identify his body and stuff oh, no. and so forth. And them is the things that really trigger me to do music. And mm-hmm. I started smoking from, from there to cope with from that incident because mm-hmm. he was coming to check me. It was like two days before my body. Yeah, and he was coming to check me. And that incident happened. Wow. Yeah, so grew up with a single mom, you know. I get thrown out of school. But I never gave up on music. Yes. You know, um, I was on the block, sell weed. Never gave myself into no criminalism. You mm-hmm. understand? Nothing to deal with crime, you know? Hustle. I went, I went in the man, Labas and all them kind of thing, you know? People mm-hmm. just dig Labas. I went to all them places to experience it, you know? All them time I was just searching for who is me now, you know? If I was a hustler, if you know I should really focus on the music. Probably I should be a bad man. Probably I should, you know? Mm. So. But then now, when I started, like, be on the streets, like, late night and stuff, with police patrolling and I had to run from police and thing. My mother used to, like, come outside in front of all the bad boys and them and cuss me. Mm. And I used to feel embarrassed. <laughs> you really? think? So. Yeah. I lock off that. Okay. And I just started focus on music, focus on music, focus on music. Nothing wasn't happening, but I was just focusing on it. You stuck to it. Yeah, and then yes. COVID come and happen, and I, I went upon my lives and do my lives and... and wow, click, yeah. connect. Yeah. So Since music... 2021 to 2022. So, so would you consider music therapy for you? Yes, it is. 
Okay. Yeah, that's why I like to stay kind of happy too and kind of hype because I doesn't want any time I feel down and I start to, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like to be, I like to talk, I like to interact. Studio, I don't like to be home plenty. I like to be working. Ah. Yeah. And keep you buzzing. Yeah. Keep you, yeah. Your energy up and yeah. focused and stuff. Yeah. Yes, my friend. We like to bring down my vibe. That's the power of music. Yeah. So what, where are you in terms of recordings and albums? And well, albums? actually, um, I have family here in Jamaica, Dong Song Records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I came here last mm-hmm. week, Wednesday. And from Wednesday to now, I, I did like 78 songs. Yes? Yes. So you came prepared with lyrics? I love music. I live for this. This just, is all I have. You just get to work and just <laughs> drop through it? Wow. Yeah, this is all I have, so I have to use it very wisely. And when I earn off it, I want to start businesses and, and so forth too. Like every country I travel to, and I try to pick the countries, what is the good countries like to, you know, I could start a pharmacy here, or a bar, or a club. Okay. So I will have reason to be. So where are some of the places you've been to perform? Oh, I've been to, well, my second time here in Jamaica. Yes. Um, I've been to Barbados. Um, Guyana, Grenada, St. Vincent, Canada, England, St. Lucia. I'm, I'm heading to Belize after mm-hmm. here, Mexico. And um, so, <laughs> with that, you said just before that during the pandemic is when you really start to get traction from yeah. in your music. And yeah. you, 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 so you get to travel to all these places in that, just that short period of time and like yes your rises is, is is quite fast it appears yeah it was like a, a lot of people on social media because um i wasn't a big person on social media mm. i reached like a hundred key followers in like two months you understand so i started like no different social media influencers and so forth and he was like asking me like how you do it how you do it yes and i was telling them like i don't know I just pour on my life and enjoy myself. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Well, brother, <laughs> young brother, <laughs> it's nice meeting you, sir. We're, we're we'll be tracking your career. Yeah. We like what we're yeah. hearing and, 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 and the focus and the therapy that you're using music for. Yeah. And we hope you will succeed. Big up all the Trinis yeah, for us, all, the, all our friends and, and families yeah, and mom. fans in Trinidad. BJRT. The great Trinidad Bridging. Yeah, it's good to have you down here in Jamaica Thank and you your impact in Jamaica. That's great. That's more of that we want to see, Bridging. Yeah, yeah, Brother, bless. Yeah, what good Bridging. Good to have you. Yeah, all right. And that's it right here in this segment of our show. Young Brother, definitely going places in music, huh? Stay with us, still to come right here on our stage, the king of dancehall. Next. On Stage with Winford Williams. On Stage is brought to you in part by... Connect JA presents Legends in Concert. That's right, it's Legends in Concert. Sunday, September 18th at Legion Field in Covington, Georgia. Get your tickets now on eventbreak.com. King of the Dance Hall, Beanie the Man, is right now right here on our stage to premiere Black and Yellow and to give a career a much overdue Career update on our stage, sir. Blessings <laughs> overdue. Where are you, man? For an update, Beijing. Yeah, where are you, man? All right. So, first of all, sir, your travels. Yeah. You've been traveling now throughout the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Be- well, I've, we've been a lot of places. I've been to Africa a few times. I went to Ghana. Yeah, I, I, I did a show there with um, the Stone Boy mm-hmm. and the, the rest of his team. And yes. it was a beautiful show and a wicked performance because I never expect the audience, because it's, it's a younger audience yes. than, you know. For Stone Boy, they're, yeah. They're after my time, see? So in your view, where did you find dancehall in Africa? 
there. Dance hall is always... Afrobeat burning up the world. Stop. You see, the dance hall is always in Africa. Like, oh, yes. it's, it's the foundation. It is, yeah. Af Afrobeat and everything. So it's always... Reggae there. and dance hall, yes. Yeah, so um, Burner Boy is a dance hall artist. Yes. That becomes... becomes Stone Boy artist. was a... Stone Boy is a, is a dance hall DJ. Yes. We know him from him a little bit, sir. Yes. You see, so there is, dance hall is the original music. Mm -hmm. So Sim Sima is the original song. They have 180 Africans sing it over almost every year. Mm -hmm. You get to me, I say. So we are always there. Is we a dance hall? No. The dance hall, no, is... Not is, there? It, no, it's not... Let me see now. It's not known to be dance hall. So oh. they call it chopper music or they call it uh, raga or they call it something else. But, yeah, but but why I ask the question about that? Because we know this. Yeah. We've been to Africa and we've heard. Yeah. And know that the music, Jamaica's music, is their music. Yeah. Right? But what I'm saying, though, is in this time of Afrobeat burning up the world, yeah. where is Jamaica's music? Well, me, me can't tell you. Because we, we, we don't have a space on the Billboard chart. We don't mm -hmm. have a space on the Grammy Awards. So I can't tell you. I can't tell you which part me there. <laughs> yeah, mash up the world. <laughs> Are you yeah. still relevant in yes, Africa? Man. This is what I want to hear from yes, you. So you're good in Africa? Yeah, I'm good all over the world. Yes. Yeah, because people just want to see me. And I'm there because, you see, the, the problem with me worrying about what people do, I got to have me, I think about them. Mm -hmm. Who are you to me to be mindful of? That makes any sense. You do your own thing and me do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, if, if me... As a youth, never listen to Shabba Rankin, I mean, never listen to Ninja Man. No one never made it today. See? Okay. So you, you have to follow the foundation and know where the foundation coming from. Mm -hmm. See? It? So it's all about building music from Jamaica. But I had before you bad abroad. When you build your music at Jamaica, you know, last six months or eight months, you last few years. Yeah. Because you build a foundation fan before you build a fan base over there. But then music changed. Mama and Papa shop closed down, CD stop sell. You can't buy a LP anymore unless you go to Japan. You can't get a 45 record for buy anything. Look at that. Oh, Japan fair sell 45. Same way. Mm -hmm. And we, the originator of 45, not selling anything. When we, as the original foundation artists, um, see that, we have to just try to get the youth them on the right level. You only can try. You can only try. Yes. If, if, if you don't think you can it. achieve that? You, you, you well, can be you successful? Well, you achieve certain of them. You see? And th them are the ones where, where they are long. Like, you know? But they, 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 them nowadays, we don't even know them. Mm. Like, seriously. Because one time, every artist knows every artist. Every yes. artist parried every artist. Now a man don't even know which two they hang out. A man don't even know which producer produce mm -hmm. You just, you roll it hundred man, and none of them are the artists. Are just, you alone are the artist. And, Music change, business change. Yes. It shouldn't be, but it's but, what it is. So your booking is still very high. Of course. Me Worldwide, me. still very, very relevant. Yeah, I'm in the pan show with them too. Yes. Yeah. And so what are people saying to you? What are fans of the music? Like, they must the, say the overseas same thing. fans. All right, they must say the same Not thing. Not Jamaicans living up No, yes. foreign people. They must say the same thing that everybody has said. Like what you just asked me, where is dance and music now? Mm. It's here with us, same way. I am the king of the dance hall, I am here. Mm -hmm. See, we still have Spice, she become the queen for real, then put a crown on her head. And congratulations to her with yes. that and all of these things. See, then we still have Bon Tequila. We, still, we have to just go and hold it. Okay. They get to me, I say. Because if we don't hold it, we're going to lose it. And if we lose it, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You see me? Where are young people in those markets overseas, in your view? Mm. Well, are they with you or with the new, new age dancer? People, I, all right, me, me, I don't mean to brag or boast, but if I go in a club America, Sim Sim, I go here now, Romy, two Sean Paul or two Bob Marley, or two Shaggy, that's why I know. Yes. I, I just said the music still less still, it's not the other step. That's why I know still. <laughs> the authenticity of dance hall is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no authentic dance hall music making anymore. What do you say, um, not nice, try it with a rhythm, I'm try with it. Yeah, I'm still a try with it. I like people listen to it and figure yes. out what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but that, that, that don't work no more. A different, a different thing, man. Because mm -hmm. the youth, they work with um, social media. And a man goes a boom and 
him buy 30 million views because you don't have 30 million fans, so you get 30 million views. Stop. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Views go out for fans. Yeah, he's not Beyonce, he's not Jay Z. Like, you get what I mean? So you get a 4 million fans and you buy views and then you buy some more and do it. If it's up a 4 million, it's up a 4 million. That way you can build to 30 million. Yes. If you go to 30 million one time, there's no building. So you're going to tell me, say you're bigger than me. And when me head up on a show, you want to close it and you have four songs. And me have one hour and, and a half what a song to sing. From the same show, you have four and you want to close after me. That means you try to push yourself to the level where you're not. And that this me see the youth, them I do. And I don't appreciate it, but them have to do what them I do. Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's good that you guys are still here. And as you say, you're still there. Yeah. And you're still king of the dance. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so let's, can we take the record now? Can we take the big song? No, anytime, but we the, are talking about the, but they are the black, black, the, yeah. bl the black and yellow. Black and yellow. <laughs> yeah, let's man. go ahead, so it's for it. Batman clean every day. Whoop. And you know we get your new girl every day. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> no, I'm not that one. I'm a, a crazy Russian and Rain Records, them produce that one. Same. And I'm not that. Sounding good, Reggie. Yeah, man. Sense. I said, we have more. for the king. <laughs> we have more to come. Yeah, because the one where you hear me sing. Yeah. Now, next single, I remember my next one, I said, Caribbean Boys. Murder me. Oh, yes. Do uh, I me sing it live for your stage? Speaking of which, yes? Yes. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking of which, yeah. that performance you mm -hmm. did on our stage for like, Caribbean Boys yeah, Caribbean. Link Up. Yes. That was a wicked Sing performance, Caribbean. well received. Yeah. And those of you who haven't seen it yet, yeah. Beanie yeah. Man, the king of the dance hall, in concert on stage TV. Go yeah. there and check it out. Blessings. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic performance. The people were looking for you in, yeah. in, in St. Croix. Yeah. And, and right. no Beanie. No, well, well, things happened. It was behind my control, but yes. yeah, we deal with it and everything. All right. Immigration issues and whatever. Yes, and but, so, but you deal with it with a recording mm -hmm. for them to see and yeah. so on. Yeah. And is there anything else you want to add to that, to say to them, to no, the fans? Well, to, because they to were really fans, looking forward to you. you know. to, uh, me know, me know, me know, not me, I tell you. Me know, man, tell them, them, them do the thing. You know? Yes, because we were <laughs> there. Fine, we man. went up there, Brett. Yeah, man, them just so only to man. Uh, Don't worry about it. But them go, them go online and them, 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 them say, them miss me and thing. But we we'll get it right and we're we'll going to deal with it because we can't deal with it the wrong way. Yes. We have to deal with it right. So we we'll get it right, we're we'll not going to see me. And sorry for, uh, for the disappointment, but it was behind my control, boss. We can't swim across the water. So wait till the people them give it. <laughs> but, but, you know, really, how do you manage this tremendous demand for you worldwide? Yeah. What, what, you do, what do you say no to? What do you say? How do you select where you go and what you take? You know, it's, it's, it's depend because you have, you have promoters, see? Mm. And you have money to keep shows. Yeah. You understand? So the promoters are the ones that you work with. The ones that are credible. Yes, that's it. And so Promoters. On. Yes. Yeah. Money will keep shows now him. Put in all different type of trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. Them not promote show, right? Then you have to go there for sell the ticket and yes. everything there. When you go for people, ticket's supposed to be a seller already. You're supposed to go to the hotel, leave the hotel, go to the show, mm -hmm. perform, go back to the hotel. Yes. If you go on after party, that's a, a year thing if you want to go there. See? Mm -hmm. Man, you keep show a colleague for after party and a force you have to go there. Yes. So you have to know which, which choice to make. I'm Summer Sizzle, is it? Is it yeah, going to come back? Yeah, man. Summer Sizzle is next year. Because show it just, this year just forward, and then we have a whole year show we couldn't cancel. Mm -hmm. See, and so and we can't cancel my birthday. So I'm just, you know, lower profile this year. But next year, most definitely. definitely back yes. next year. De definitely. All right, sir. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. Blessings. And, and we're now wait till August this time. May I keep it July? Uh, okay. Yeah. And Sting. Sting is back. Well, them say it in the back yet till it come back. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> them say them can't keep a show name Sting, but it, it not going to be the same Sting. It have to be Sting. Yes. So you don't think a show name, it going to look like the, the sting original back Sting? back on All right. Them are artists say a clash for online. You think them are clash a Sting? Mm. They're not going to clash. If you disrespect a man earlier in the year, you know, say December 26th. You have to go defend that. Yes. You know that and me know that. That is thing. And all of them. That won't happen, you say? 
A lot of them DJ who are gonna crash, they tell me who are gonna crash. Like, who you think will crash as thing? Like, how the all I DJ them will win? I don't know. I, man, I say, then we look at it, man, I say, them not, them not know. And they, 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 nobody's really saying no right out. So it's still possible some clashing can work. Yeah. How's thing I go work if the DJ them not willing to clash? This yeah. is how it go. You can't clash my record. And then when you see artists, you're up and, oh, me now go up on the stage, come here and them boy, they're not friend. You're not even a friend, that's how you're not clash. Yeah. And this is how you do you clash. You go up on stage and you clash it out. You know, fight the DJ and I worry them and run him down and chop him up. This is how clash go. But maybe the, the foundation dance mm. allers. But no, no, we not clash. Should do, you know, sure that my clash can work. <laughs> like oh, you. Clash, I'm a peaceful clash now, man. Yeah, I kill them. But <laughs> sure them all with peaceful clash. Yeah, but we, 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 say, we uh, come of age now. The second we play, we play, we play sports. sports. That doesn't make no sense. And him father and him sister and him brother, that doesn't make no sense. Yeah. I tell about the youth them. Today, we say them a clash. We see about 14, 25 clash. I want to lose, I want to come back and win, I want to lose, I want to come back and win, I want to lose, I want to come back and win. But you see them now take the same show because them now want to clash. Mm. Not even that, them are doing. Them now take the same show. I now work on a stage show with them because I ain't a friend. You ain't even yeah. a friend. You don't kill your brother, you don't do nothing to you. All you do is throw a little word for you. So you're afraid to throw back word for him. Mm. This is how music goes. That makes artists bad, you know. You keep it on your tour where you're supposed to be. Yes. You know, it make no sense. You yes, say, yo, me I get big now, I'm international, I'm a star, wow. Well, you know, in a sense, sense, you know, the way the violence wicked right now in our, in our, in our country, right? Clash will stop it because I'm a fight violence, a musical violence. You think if they get to express themselves on stage, they will stop? On stage, of course. The real violence. Because then you go shut up, because you know, say you're not bad. Okay. There you go. Ta-da. So, you yeah. remember when Lady saw Clash with Maka Diamond? Yeah. Makaraiman couldn't say nothing in a car, he said I got too hard. That's just not trying to tell you. Okay. <laughs> so, so you, <laughs> that's an interesting point you're making. Yeah. So those days when Uno did a clash. Yeah, approve oh. yourself. Approve yourself. Yeah, man. And when the clash done, you do what you feel. Yeah, you're good you enough. Kill nobody, no, you don't feel me kill nobody. No, nobody dead because you dead and you happy. Yeah. I know no one no dead and the two are happy. Yes. So when the interviewer come and say, you just like a clash thing, man, or rare, rare, rare. But before that, it could have get violent. Mm -hmm. But they take it verbal instead of take it physical. Yes. It's mental, Bridget. Take it to the music, Bridget. Yeah. Sting and I come up. And the doctor had a talk about it. Give me some tell us. Yeah, so well, if, sting, if Sting keep, and the man in my clash, now nah, I clash. I don't know Sting. So every man got just perform, and now nah, I clash. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I say clash, they want clash. Me and some man, I say, me and RT boss say, we clash. Lincoln, who uh, that, that <laughs> Lincoln, <laughs> three that. So that's yeah, it's <laughs> so it's, <laughs> People want to say clash, like clash, yes. like the artists them we are clash on record and I say, eh, but we are very, 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 that clash of them one. So is it, if, if, if Isa is willing to pay the money, you think they will take it? <laughs> big money. They will take big they money. Big, big money not go for clash, you know? Mm. Clash of ego. Yes. You have no say so you can do it and go clash. Big Mon money much. no matter. No money no matter, because if you're dead, you're still dead. You're, 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 boy, you get paid for that. You have to go there for clash. If you say, it, you now go beat me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when the clash looked like it, it wicked, one back of ring and that's it. <laughs> State clash done. But no man, no win. <laughs> no war, no war. No <laughs> man, no guy said them things. You know that, me I try to be sure. I said the thing, we fling her back later. Yeah, but if I want back of ring, the clash done. That me I tell you. Because yeah. it's the same can't manage. But it's still I got to lose. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, God. Because, yeah, all right. Yeah. So, so you got six up. Mm. And him not got none. Yeah. Get, you have to run him off. I, I, me, me. Leave me stage. Go ahead and come off of the stage. <laughs> see, see, I, see, remember when Ninja Man and Shabba Rankin, they were clashing. Ninja Man and Super Cat mm. clashing. They no fight after that. But there was that unvoiced rule in the game, Road Boy, mm. where you don't attack an artist. You don't attack each other. No. A producer and a producer now get physical. 
<laughs> an artist and an artist now get physical. Leave there was that no the entourage. Yeah, the, but you know, get physical <laughs> in other thing, Reggie. Man, <laughs> just, and no matter how them are, them, them hate one another, them not my getting into the into artists them are telling a clash with lyrical. They are clash and tell us that they are bad man and they are 100 man to chop you up on them. That no work in a music. Yes. Now my music, if me say that happen in front of me, is a different thing. I can tell you that. And that cannot happen in front of me. That will never happen mm. in front of me. If me the cross you, then it happen in nah, in front of me. Yes. Because if me dead, it can't start. It's Peace. very simple. You have to make... Yeah, you have to go talk about, man. Two hours now have a lyrical confrontation. Make it lyrical confrontation. Mm. Because we are teach the youth them we are watch Uno say. Them for turn gun man and, and, and walk with 100 people and shoot them one in their life. If a boy says something to me, I rush shoot you. Nah, mm. you not teach you them nothing. Teach yourself before you try to be. Yes. It's very simple. Learn first before you try to teach. It's very simple. So when, when the youth them see them one in their life, they oh, I'm not going over there, I'm going to stand up. I'm not going over there, I'm stand up. When I'm going to kill that boy, I say, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. If I say Elliman fan, when me and him are bridging them time, they make a yell him. And me and him are yeah, talking. Yeah, and him have that. Do they scare them? That part. Yeah, no, that me I try to tell them, I'm not busy about Bunty, I'm not going to yell him. I saw me stay. I'm not like me a bad man. I have no fear. Mm. When it comes to music and musician, no fear is not supposed to be there. The only fear you fear is when you step on stage. If you know if Bunty has build a new lyrics to chop in your head tonight, <laughs> and how you go forward. Okay. And that are the only fear you have in a music. You're not supposed to fear no man, Bridget. Because no man is not supposed to be in a bad man in music. Yeah. The Versus, right? Yeah. The Versus with the Ankila. What about that model? You think it could work in Jamaica? Of course. Versus work anywhere because it's just a great show. Mm -hmm. It works anywhere, but again, who you going Versus with? <laughs> Remember, it's a clash show that thing. Yes, it is. And now we turn stage show, man, really a clash. Yes. Who are going to clash? All right, boss. <laughs> love it. Winford. Yes, I'm, sir. I'm great, King Bean, it's always good to be yep. in your presence, sir, and to hear from you. Blessing. And keep up the good work. Love. You're still representing us well Every in time. the world, sir. 100%. I mean, and no, yeah, guy yeah. Can, no guy can not diss you. No boy, I guess. I feel glory you bring to, for Jamaica when you walk out. Right? No boy, I guess. No matter what they want to say. That's how you go. You're a king being there anyway. all artists, no disrespect to no artists. But I can help myself sometimes. I've taught my mind. Blessings, yes. respect and menace. Ah, I see. Every time. Well, there you have him on our stage as usual. The king of the dance hall. Always so much to learn from him. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. We'll join us again next week for more on stage. Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.